Welcome back to our semi-final bout between Maryville and Illinois, where the BTN reps finally picked up their first win here in game number three. Success on red side has meant we're going back to red side again for Illinois. And all of a sudden, Crumbs, what looked like what could be a very short day here for the Maryville boys is starting to turn into something maybe a bit longer, maybe a lot longer. Yeah. So if you just tuned in, Maryville was very close to coming up with just a 3-0 sweep of the University of Illinois. But the University of Illinois answered back in the last game that we just had with Yasuo mid and just crushed it. Yasuo Sejuani did so much work. And now we just don't know what to expect for this next time around because they have such a different look than when we just saw in game one and game two that it looks like they're just completely invigorated. I think we were looking for mid and jungle on the Illinois side to maybe make more impact. Certainly did that in the last game, but Topopotamus absorbing pressure, still being team fight relevant on the Nico. The Bosch and Timmy Tommy just having a much more straightforward time in lane. Certainly a lot to look at and say, hey, we can do this, but every game is different. Although I'm glad that isn't as Illinois will continue banning the Thresh. Yes, yes. Very good to get rid of that champion. Especially when you're up against somebody that you know is just exceptional at it. It's such a curveball when you have to deal with the lantern, with the flays to interrupt many of your moving abilities, with the hooks that keep coming one after the other. But what is Maryville going to be doing this time around? Because I think the Sejuani has really risen in priority here to the point where Illinois will easily take that in their first rotation, but is Maryville gonna just first pick Sejuani? That's a weird one. We'll see. Rek'Sai gonna be taken out again. Aurelia also joining Gangplank with that Thresh there as the band. We'll see what Maryville have aligned up for their last band here. Seems like a lot of discussion, whatever it is, with the run the clock down. And take out Ooh, Ooh. Sejuani. Yeah, Sejuani making sure that INW Project 1 does not get that pick again. I think that CKG was happy with the carry versus carry matchup, not so thrilled about carry versus Sejuani. And without that hard engaged tank, there's really no one like her in the meta, right? Ah, no, it's funny guy. Playing to the camera a little there as he first picks Aatrox once again. Now, CKG took it in the last game, which was a curveball in that draft. I imagine this time maybe Niles will just settle on that. I also did hear people cheering for Zillion earlier on. We'll see if that does show up at all. But uh, once again, the Bosch will go back to Tristana and Timmy Tommy says, give me that Braum. Yeah, Braum, Tristana already picking up the pieces that would make Yasuo viable once again. So maybe Illinois gonna do the salty run back. Maryville certainly has no qualms with it by taking away the Silas again. Now last time, Silas makes sense. I think it's a very strong champion. Wolfie has shown uh, a lot of proficiency on it as well. But I wonder if Clyde takes a champion early here. We did say, you know, what happens when you're pushed down to a champion that we haven't seen you in yet? His Rakan looked okay, but not nearly at the same level of impact as his Thresh or his Pike. So I wonder if they're just considering taking Pike now. Maybe the Braum matchup isn't great. Hey, I forgot a hook champion. Another There's another hook champion, that's right. And this makes a lot of sense when it comes to dealing with targets that are hard to catch, like the Tristana. It doesn't matter if you're rocket jumping, you're still gonna get hit by that dredge line, or you'll still get hit by the depth charge as well. And as you said, the pieces of that comp are still kind of there, but if they want Yasuo, I think they might have to take it now. Otherwise, I think it'll be banned. Instead, they decide that Topopotamus back on the Nico or Xeno, of course, can flex the pick around is a bit more important. So they retain some of their flexibility here in the draft and we'll move into phase two of bands to see what else gets taken away as Nocturne, once again, off the table for CKG. But if you're Maryville, do you ban yet? Well, the answer is clear. You do ban the Yasu. You don't want to deal with it again. It was a bit of a pain. I think the wind wall is really what hurts most of the time. And it's something that's very difficult to account for in a team fight. When I'm playing with a, with a team, it's always the AD carry that keeps complaining. I can't do anything. The Yasu is not killing me, but I just can't participate. My abilities don't go through. My auto attacks are not registering. I need help with dealing with Winwall. Well, the ban table is definitely one way to address it and we're not gonna see him or Zoe. Yeah, but this has to be, uh, I think, very much expected here for Illinois. They've had Zoe banned against him in a number of games and I don't think they expected to get Yasuo in phase two. So Silver will be taken out as well to join Nocturne there on the Illinois side of the draft. 
And Skarner, the NA special. Ooh, so I think Skarner is really great right now, but you're also giving Silas the ability to steal Skarner ultimate, which is even nastier. Now there's two Skarners that are pulling people across the map so they can pull each other. You might be able to just perma stun each other, right? They both use pull at the exact same frame. Oh, that's an actual Amumu pick. It's a tank. It's what you want to see. The, the meta is tanks for this series. Tank junglers. Is that really how you respond when Sejuani gets banned? You're like, I need another champion like Sejuani. They also have Nautilus. So Amumu did get a little bit of a buff That's where true. the Thanks, Q, Jeff. his bandage toss is a little bit hot fixed. I believe his passive does a little bit more of shredding damage. So you shred MR to the point where you deal a little bit of true damage from your magic spells, and that's gonna help out Silas and Ezreal a whole lot. Ooh, Vladimir also being left unbanned. Ezreal there for Maryville, but top of Potamus, I believe, going back to Vi I, Of course, I can flex it. Both these solo laners are able to play in either role, so we'll see exactly where they wanna land them, but pretty decent team fight, but uh, maybe Amumu is the team fight breaker. <laughs> He's a team fight god. Amumu is absolutely amazing in team fighting. One of the cool combos that you can do on the Amumu that not a lot of people do, you can press ultimate and then flash, registering the location of your ultimate in the location where you flash, similar to how you can do an insect on Lee Sin where you buffer the kick and flash at the same time. The same thing works with Amumu. So if CKO can do that this game, he can have the filthiest engages. Yeah, I mean, good follow up too. We've got Nautilus, Silas can steal a team fight ulti, like Hemoplague, or Pop Blossom, or Glacial Fissure, or Impale. Those seem quite good. Yeah, even the Tristana ultimate, the Buster Shot, is going to be a good ultimate. Good for executing, good for getting a target like Vladimir out of the fight. If you can just zone him off, he's not going to be able to do a whole lot. He's not the greatest at getting in there. Well, see if Illinois can come up with it again, but this time it's Maryville that show the curveball here. Amumu for CKG. I legitimately cannot remember the last time I saw Amumu in a competitive game. It's been a very it long time. It might be actually 2000. Because now, <laughs> that's nine years ago. <laughs> it's like, it's like, that's what I'm saying. It might be like actual season one slash two. Cloud Templar, last Amumu of all time. Oh, that's true. So, with a Mumu. I'm sad that people now don't know who Cloud Templar is. The game is old enough now that there is a large subsection yeah. of people that most, will watch League of Legends don't. that don't know who it is. Well, you can go tank, you can go AP. AP would be a little bit better. You want to kind of do a mix of both. You don't just want to go full tank, but this just might be the game where you need somebody to be the front line for your team. But if you can get ahead early and just start going with a AP Amumu build, you deal crazy amounts of damage because your passive sets yourself up as well. All right, well, let's see if we can get some answers because Ovali is standing by with Illinois coach Ido. Thanks, guys. I am here with Ido again. And what happened in game three and what changed for the team going into it? Because all of a sudden it looked like Illinois had life. Yeah, so I know we said last time that uh, we need to play faster and really take it to them. And even though we did that, we kind of like hard into game two. So I guess, I don't know, maybe we need two games to warm up and now we uh, reverse sweep. Now was the Amumu pick predicted coming into this game? Uh, honestly, no, not at all. I didn't know that they would have pulled something like that out, but I think it shows a little bit of desperation because um, we've taken him really deep into his champion pool and I think Amumu is really suboptimal. So I think it shows a lot based on what champion pool they have. We're going to have to see how that pick plays out as well as this game. Best of luck to you and your team. Back to you guys. Suboptimal are his words. Look at that. That's the next level diss now. We got a new word for us. All right. We'll see KG. We'll see if he can show up, but he's crying on the wolves right now. Actually, both junglers started small camp first, but uh, definitely attention on Amumu. It is true, though. If you're pushing down your junglers and you have four jungle bands and already the response is a Mumu, I think you've done a good job in in weakening one of the players on Maryville. So we're going to take the Raptors. So two small camps there for a Mumu. Project one onto the red buff. Oh, that hook landed. Clyde just never misses, man. After Chuck Prox gets the damage down and Bosch, under 50% health, has to chug the potion. Luckily, he does have that Doran shield that's going to help him stay sustained in this minion wave. And Ezreal just can't answer back pushing. So Tristana will always have priority in this lane. 
due to the nature of his her Papapotamus also back to Glacial Augment, kind of as expected. So it will be that AP more team fighting Nico once again. Niles has built up about one CS lead or so as uh, Topopotamus will collect those next few. But definitely expecting aggression there, although maybe not expecting help from his jungler. I imagine CKG will be farming up until level six. Yeah, I mean, Amumu's ganks early are not the worst. They just don't have that much damage, especially when a target has escapes like Brahma and Tristana. This is not the lane you want to be going after before level six. So Amumu will just be happy to farm away. Considering the way Maryville has played, I'm pretty sure they're just going to be looking at top lane anyways if he wants to go for a pre-6 gank. Well, does not take a recall. Looked like he might have for a second, but I think he wants to get some info. Actually wants the Scuttle Crab instead. Again, that late spawn here. As a reminder, we are on 9.10. CKG will take this Crab away from Project 1. There's actually still one up on the left side as well. That jungle is able to grab that, although Amumu looks to be now taking that back. And if you're not familiar and you were just only watching MSI and those kinds of matches, Skarner right now, very strong in the shrine. The shrine giving him tons of attack speed, tons of movement speed, even mana regeneration. But any time that he's not in the shrine, he's very easy to pick off. He's super weak at countering jungling. He's very weak at skirmishing. It's only in those locations where he's very intimidating. So you rarely see something like what Project One is doing, which is looking for an opportunity to counter jump. Saskia does have teleport, so doesn't get his recall cancel, goes back to the tier and straight back to lane. Here is Clyde, doesn't quite get the info. INW Project One hanging out in the rush. Now pops the Predator in onto Clyde, looking for the stun, gonna land it with the Crystal Eyes. Well, that's a waste of time. Yeah, I like the Predator, did have the boots early, but not sure that gank was gonna work out. In fact, now that CKD knows what's up, he's gonna roam into the jungle and steal away the Raptors. Get a deep control in there as well. They're both level six junglers, so they should be trying to power farm, and then is doing a better job of not only getting some counter jungling, but she's he's even one level up. Gonna get the bonus crab as well by the looks of things, so two crabs for Amumu and zero for Skana to kick off the game. I'm sure as a jungler crumbs, you are despaired. Yeah, I mean, when I see this happening, I'm always very sad that the opponent knows where I am and took all my camps, so now I don't really have anywhere to go. So it becomes super obvious and very difficult for me to find a gank after that. Niles also getting pushed in right now. Now the top laner has recalled or used their TP, of course, just yet. But top of bottom is keeping it even once again. See, look at that, those pings. They know that Skarner is in the top side of the map. Everybody else can play as aggressive as they want because they know Skarner is not coming. No ults here in the mid lane. Zeno getting low, forced to burn into pool. Both have TP here in the mid lane, but that will be Vladimir forced away here. Vlad just trying to get that level nine. That's really the, the time where he becomes annoying. Obviously the cooldown reduction on the Q going down to the lowest possible denominator. Yep, you can see right now we'll be up 11 CS, but Xena will pick up as many of the seven there as he can, though we did lose one to the turret while TPing in. Uh, we'll see if uh, Wolfie also wants to commit his teleport or if he feels comfy walking in. Back on a cannon wave, so it should be fine. Just walk this out and hold on to that summoner advantage. Sasuke also with the ward in the brush, so able to poke him out. So curious to see what these junglers do with their first gank, because Skarner is going to be good at ganking the mid lane, and I think Amumu will be as well against the Vladimir. Top lane is a little bit of a struggle because you don't want to get baited out by Nico and if Aatrox is not overextended, you're not going to find it. So I think bottom lane is really where you're looking out for, especially if you're a Mumu. He's already level six. You want to get that two-man ultimate. This takes me back, Crumbs. Yeah, this takes me back all the way to when Art I flash. first started playing League of Legends. Our flash. A Mumu gank in the lane that has the most value and now spotted. Oh, it's only Clyde, though. That's good. That's very good. Nice he, little mind game. Yeah, he revealed himself, so now he says, all right, you know that I'm in the lane. There's nothing nothing suspicious about here. No Amumus in these brushes. Well, uh, apparently, Illinois don't like it. Not going to take the bait for now. He's going to have the wave pushed in, and Maryville aren't going to line up the dive, so Amumu does go down bot, but not going to get much of it, unfortunately, for him. We are going to have that Cinderhook Amumu. No AP for us, so he's going to be that main source of engage for Maryville. See, Zeno still taking trades, but not easy right now for Vlad without, again, as you mentioned, that max transfusion. 
to really survive, but we'll be just fine. Slight CS lead, but I think teams will be happy with how the lanes are going for the most part. Nothing has happened in the top lane for now. Ooh, a fight in the mid lane. Stolen Hemo Plague. Xeno not going to die. I'll find Orb does proc, but again, it's able to heal up slowly but surely. Just needed one creep for Project One. Now a level six Garner, but they just saw him in the mid lane, and Silas just pushed Vladimir all the way back into the third. So this is a good opportunity to go for the dragon. How do you realistically respond to this when the Aatrox is roaming down, and you have a Namumu that is going to be able to turn on you on the drop of a hat? and get every single member locked down. Yeah, well then prior there, Sethko and Clyde using that well to cover the jungle up. Again, Wolfie continuing to find really good trades here onto the Vlad. Paul is down, but still has flash, so always a tough champion to try and kill, but Wolfie just says, I'll take the slight CS lead, I'll go back and spend my gold, and we'll kind of go from there. And Vice is not the lane you're gonna be able to punish here as Silas, especially in the mid lane, so splitting farm, it'll all come down to who can team fight better. We'll check back in with Niles again. Top of Potamus, much different stories on the Jace this time around. Aatrox not nearly as strong at dominating lanes, and Nico is pretty tricky to lane against in either form, the AP or AD. Project One swoops in to take the creeps because Xeno was backing anyway. Oh, misses one. You hate to see it, it. It's actually a pretty important skill for junglers to be able to last hit minions because oftentimes you do have to cover waves and. If you can last hit everything perfectly, your opposing jungler is not getting any of that lane farm. It makes a world of difference. You know, 100, CA, 100 gold will be that extra control ward that lets you set up your next play even better. Niles continuing to try and look for chains here, but Topopotamus uses the W, splits up, as Maryville might have something lined up here. Clyde is once again roaming around, but I think that True Shot Barrage... That was, no, that was bold. That was bold. Maybe almost gave it away. Look at all the vision they have for Niles in the top lane, though. There's no way a Skarner can get in here. Every entrance has been covered. They're going to have even a Scuttler when it comes back up. So Skarner, they 100% know is in the bottom side of the map, and they're okay with it because you have an Ezreal that can farm from a distance and is going to be able to escape unlike most traditionally AD carries. And we're going to get another different game here. 10 minutes through, been very quiet, still first blood up and available. We talked about, you know, in the last game, we'll look, up, look at what Maryville's defense looks like when they were behind and Illinois were able to win resoundingly. Now with an even game, how do they execute from this stage? Because this is a lot of games are like this, especially as you go up in levels. Teams maybe being a bit quieter, not wanting to take as many risks early, but then we have to test the map movement and execution as Rift Tower is going to be the nice first objective. Got both the first Drake and the only Herald here. Amumu's crushing. He got out of the early game. He's level 7, level 8 now. He's going to complete his jungle item even with a Rift Herald. So two objectives to the Amumu team. So, you know, sure, he got knocked down in priority, but he's still playing this fine. And Skarner is down in CS. So I'm all for the Amumu at this point. I also kind of like that the Trist here for the second game in a row means that whenever Clyde leaves, it's actually much easier for you to punish. I think for those first few games, Clyde kept leaving, yeah. and then they couldn't do anything to the turret. Sasko's just farming away. Ezreal also very safe, so he's not really in any threat. But now with Trist, they just say, ignore the Ezreal, take the turret plates, and get a lead that way. So Clyde, I think, is finally getting punished for how much he roams. That's a really good point. The fact that they're not having to waste their jungler's time, and instead the AD carry can find the punishment on his own, makes a world of difference, because now Project One has has more time to help the other parts of the map to establish vision and so that Niles can't start just pounding on the top lane, which, by the way, this is the first time in the entire series, Topopotamus with a CS lead over Niles. Yeah, it's not much, but he'll take it. Actually, almost a wave as Niles actually also used his TP. Topopotamus still hasn't used his and now goes back with a finished GLP. Our flash would work here. Back in the brush here in bot lane. Oh, sneaks out. Does have the Rift Herald to use, so wants to try and get some value with the plates, and if they can take a turret, even better. Clyde, once again, they're going to start roaming, so pretty sure mid lane's going to be the target here. Just teleport into the mid lane. Almost two plates for the Silas, though, so he's quite happy here. All right, make it three. Project One going to come for a bit of coverage. Looks like the next big fight is going to be that Infernal Dragon coming up soon where both teams will have to fight for that. There's just 
no going around giving up one of those major objectives without trying to trade something or without even looking for it yourself. We'll see again. Oh, finds a stun. Zeno needs a big chunk of damage. That hook was close, but not quite there. But here comes the Rift Herald again. Collapse from Niles from the top lane. Charge comes in, gets a lot of the turret for Project One. Gonna find the Impale. They stole the Scarner ulti though. Locked up still, Clyde is gonna go down. It's first blood over to the Bosch. And now the fight gonna continue. Glacial Fisher doesn't tag one, but still. 5v4 now for Illinois. They take out the Nautilus. That's not a very high priority target. I think that Mid or Maryville can still continue to be aggressive here. They're going onto the Vlad. They found the pool and Dragon is right back up. I think Amumu is strong enough to actually be able to take these fights 4v5. Yeah, they get mid-prio back as well. The Drake has not been started yet by Illinois. They're trying to defend this control ward, but both will die there in the pixel brush. Drake now aggro going to do some damage to the Bosch. Nautilus is back. Almost, it's like it didn't count, and now you don't have that flash and pale out of Skarner. So Maryville University now has the advantage when it comes to dealing with this dragon. Yeah, Wolfie still has the Skarner ult too. It lasts a minute once you hijack with Silas, so you have quite a long window to try and use the ultimate. And actually, that's enough to force them off. They didn't take their chance after killing the Nautilus. Wolfie is a bit low. They get mid prio back, but it's too late. The Drake goes over to Maryville. That was the happiest and easiest dragon of their life. They're trying to go on Clyde, but he's just going to flash away happily. That's an infernal. That's a big play. And all that started from an engage that University of Illinois did to counter the Herald. But they were just not expecting that the play was going to carry on long enough for them to lose infernal after. The turret's still low, but first brick still on the table for either team. Now they'll do well to get to the objective and try and force a play around the middle with their Herald. You know, when Skarner went for that play, I wonder if he really meant to go onto the Nautilus because that's just not a very high priority target. Yes, you can take him out right away, but, you know, eliminating a Silas, a Aatrox, someone like that usually matters a lot more. Well, again, kind of continuing the theme of how close this game is. You can see only four to three plates there at the end of it all, despite the Herald charge. Niles are going to stay here and finish it off. He actually did a great job Harassing Zeno down, and Niles able to take that first turret, get some gold, and break open the center of the map. That's solo gold for him. 450 in his pocket, and while he was unable to punish Nico, with that money in the bag, I think that he's now going to be one completed item ahead of him. Yes, Topopotamus has base and does have the GLP completed, but Niles has been splitting off his gold into two items. I think that is going to be the Black Cleaver and a Death Dance. He just hasn't committed to one complete build path just yet. Yeah, up about a thousand gold or so. They're checking quickly. And does have 2k to spend. So he's going to stick around to harass this turret down. We actually see Zeno, the one to rate it up here to the top lane. Well, it's kind of fancy to 1v1 before, though. Back with a proto belt. And now level 11. Zeno's ready for a fight if one happens. One's about to happen. Mid lane, Project One gonna get banished, tossed up, there's the curse of the sad mummy! And Project One getting low, the Pop Blossom defense is nice, finds a double stun, doesn't follow up with a double root, and the last missile from the Proto Belt doesn't find the Skana, but the Trujo Barrage zipped around by Project One. That was so close, but the Skana being a little bit too tanky at this stage in the game. Maybe if CKG used the Blue Smite as well to burst down Project One, that might have done him in, but... Anyways, they walk away and they get the Amumu ultimate out of it as well. So, he's very happy to take that because now, Maryville's not going to be able to look for a very big team fight without the Amumu ult. Yep, successful dodge, I suppose, from Illinois. CKG will have to wait quite a while for the ulti to come back off cooldown. Level 1, CD is over 2 minutes. So, even though he does have... Some CDR, I'm sure, in inspiration. Gonna take a while still. And lots of lane swapping going around. I mean, we'll be now back up in the top lane. Ooh, oh, grabs it. Pop, boss, and pop. Gonna force the flash. Very nice out of him. I think that's one of the best abilities of Silas in using the ultimate steal right away as you're about to use it because it always catches your opponent off guard. Also nice that you have, you know, Dash as Clyde spotted by the Skana, who popped Predator. I think make sure no dive happens here. Wolfie, though, maybe still fancies a go. 
Ezreal and Braum are, or Tristan and Braum are making their way to the top side. So the lane assignments are going to be swapped around. Vlad in the mid lane, Trist top, and Nico once again into the Aatrox. Nico versus Aatrox is the right play. It's been going well so far. She hasn't lost any turrets. And she's keeping up in CS. I also so still hasn't completed an item. Actually, is favoring CDR. It's kind of like a ribbon build in a lot of ways. Yeah. You skip that first major item because you just want cost efficient CDR. Well, he's already maxed, I believe, at this point. Between. Well, it's not really. I mean, he's at 20%. I'm not doing math on it. Let but me tell you. We just don't know what he's running for his runes. Well, Bosch continuing to do Tristana things and looking to knock down the turret. Jimmy Tommy also over, so it might just be a trade, although Xeno does catch the wave in the bottom top of Potamus, not so lucky, into Stasis, goodbye as Amumu claims one. Without having to use the ultimate, this puts him in a really good position to continue to dive. Tristana and Braum are basing, but they're not close. Where does Maryville rotate to next? It looks like they are thinking about the tier two or just taking away the blue side jungle, setting this up for the ocean dragon that's about to spawn. Yeah, almost up, but watch this again. Topopotamus just going for a stroll through the jungle. Without flash, you just can't afford to be there. The Nautilus is going to take you out every single time. One of the most powerful engaged tools in the game because of how unavoidable. Exhaust on a project one. That first knockup does connect, but the Impale is there. True Chopper Arjun will be with the stolen ult as well as Niles is able to get the kill. Zeno trying to look for the flank. There's a the curse of the sad mummy locking up the Vladimir. He's going to go down. No, the healing massive from the Hemo playing as Miles. Still trying to fight out the rest of the Bosch. UI looking to reinforce top of bottom. It's going to finally make his way in with a pop blossom. Gets two for the snap, but he gets hooked on the other side of it. Sasuke able to get the next kill. It's Wolfie that's going to follow up with the second. And you could see that Wolf still had the scar in her ultimate and flashed into seal Vladimir's fate. It looked really good for them. The fact that Vlad got a big hemo play and Tristana was going to follow up. But there's just so much AoE on the side of Silas, Amumu, Nautilus. And then you throw in the Ezreal just hammering away Qs and hopping away. Very difficult to team fight against. And will give them the Ocean Drake as well. Still up three turrets to two, so we'll watch this team fight again. So it all started with Nautilus getting the hook onto the Skarner. And yes, they commit onto him right away, but Vladimir is still in the back line just thinking about when is the right time to engage. Skarner gets taken out, but he's still here. Finds the Hemo Plague. Here it is. Three man. Gets a few spells off and E, but no, not a lot of Q spam on him. And the fact that Ezreal is able to be over the wall really thwarts their plans because now they have to refocus on the rest of the tank and Aatrox gets the reset so you can forget about even going on him. Well done, the pops was safe in the front side. As Mariv will clean up the remaining kills there in the fight. Two items now finished for Wolfie. Black Cleaver now done for Niles. He has that first completed item all finished up. And once he gets that death dance, that's when things get really spicy for Aatrox because he's going to be healing off every single spell he throws at you. And that's just more healing on top of healing. And there's not a single damage or healing reduction spell on the side of University of Illinois. Not yet, at least. Vladimir is building it, but he's very far away because it looks like he's only completed the Oblivion Stone and looking for a Zhonyas before completing the Morellos. DKP might be looking for a bandage toss here. Maryville trying to take full control of the left side of the map for that Baron as uh, we are at 21 minutes. Baron certainly very doable for either team. Amumu is actually not bad in front of the old Baron. No, not at all. I mean, Amumu is legit at this point. If you can scale on him, his issue has never been mid to late game. It's always been how do you get past early and how do you find a really big ultimate? So the ultimate part is all about the player, but getting past the early game, that's always been the issue of the champion. Against a Skarner matchup that's never going to try to counter jungle you or invade you, you're good to go. Yeah, GKG, as you mentioned, has gotten out. It's Maryville waiting for the speed, trying to run out. Maybe start that Baron up. Sasuke also up here towards the top lane. Feeling pretty healthy on his own. He's going to go back and might actually have enough the Blade of the Ruined King does not as they check his gold. Just grabs two daggers instead. Pretty close though to item number three. You can see that Maryville building up a pretty sizable gold lead. Up 4k is nice. We have seen this team be very effective when ahead. Yeah, this Aatrox now, he does have the death stance. He is 
very powerful. Amumu with the Abyssal Mask as well to help out himself and Silas. A little bit of Ezreal too, so... This is a very powerful team fighting composition now, and Skarner is not your team fighting guy. He is all about finding picks, and he just has not been able to convert a single one just yet. All the fights have been team fights or them getting caught out, as opposed to a proactive pop that predator, let's find somebody to pick off and then lock him out with Tristana and Rom. So they always have a shot. I've seen Skarners come back making plays hundreds of times, so it's just a matter of being proactive and making the most out of that rune. That keystone, you have to use the Predator. The Baron continues to go dark here for Illinois. Niles also applying that side lane pressure. Yes, Topopotamus is more than ready for some sort of team fight. With the GLP and the Twin Shadows done, but have to be more concerned about losing that big objective. The Bosch gonna be forced to rocket jump away. And all this setup, all this vision. Primeiro can look to take this top out of turret. Maybe even get a dive here onto Zeno if he's not careful. And at that point, you have so much control over this top quadrant of the map that Baron becomes a very difficult thing to try and contest. Especially when you have a mountain that you're dealing with. Not only do you have a mountain, but an ocean dragon. That lets you start the Baron, back off, heal up, and reset, and continue to do so. Whereas in University of Illinois, they have to commit to the fight or just base right away. They can't afford to stay on the map. So dealing with vision and clearing this out is very difficult for them. And nerve-wracking, which is why it takes multiple members to group up just to use a sweeper. CCKG covering for Wolfie, who does get the turret now 4-2. to two, And maybe it's time to pull the trigger on the Baron. Niall's going to go back to the bottom lane and get that pushing out as well. And you have to think, you said it already, that Skana is so great at finding picks. He would love to come down here and alt Niles to try and get him off the map. But with Baron being such a big threat, it's tough to commit your jungler to yeah. killing the bottom line. You just can't even afford to move into the bottom line. If you do that, you're going to be giving up top. So you better have a plan of action against it. And when you have an ocean and a mountain, I think that you just can't afford to do it. You're going to lose the objective right away. And unfortunately, they can't use Vladimir and Nico to get a pick. It has to be Tristana. She's the only one providing significant DPS at this stage of the game. Yeah, two items on both is okay, but you have to find a pretty good looking engage. So confident in that team fight. And again, we've talked to how good the team fight is with the Nautilus Amumu Silas combination. But look at how good the pick could be from Skarner. He has Righteous Glory, he's got that Predator and Flash. It only takes one. But well, you can use all three to guarantee it. Here we go. Cloud going in, forced to instantly flash away. Just a prank. <laughs> I've seen something different on that hook. There's the flash impale that you mentioned. Gonna lock, lock him up that with the eyes of blood. Bravo. It's that easy. You didn't even have to pop that flash. I think Righteous Glory would have been more than enough to catch up to him between Blue Smite, Righteous Glory, Predator. But I think they're starting to get the idea. Ooh. He's making plays. In the bottom side, we've got Nico versus Aatrox, and Nico just can't stand out to Aatrox. Yeah, Death point. Dance kind of winning the day here alongside the Black Cleaver as Niles continues to apply pressure and get the turret. And this is a very similar situation to what we saw in game one. They had the Silas, they had a different side lane at that time, but still Niles was able to get really far pushed up in the side lane. And at some point, Illinois have to find an answer to this pressure, whether or not it's ganking the side lane with Oscana, or if it's just committing for a different engage. But the Dragons are stacking up, and Illinois can't afford to let them fall into the same trap they kind of did last time, where they just didn't do enough, didn't play fast or aggressive enough when the situation demanded it. No, and they're starting to do it now, but it has to be on cooldown. Every single impale, you have to be looking for that play about 10 seconds before it comes back up so that you can start chaining these objectives quicker and quicker every single time. And you saw that Tristan, I can already melt them. Here's another one. This could be a good one. It's kind of not quite there. Depth charge out, though. Going to find the Bosch. Niles also looking for the collapse. They need to get the Trist. Bosch will flash away. But Niles just dunks him with the Q. And that's Rom on the front side. Going to go down to Wolfie. Man, will finally engage and grab two kills. The bot lane dead, and Xeno forced to flash as well. The Nautilus ultimate is just so powerful. It doesn't matter who you are. The second you get tagged, if you're Zanya, you're still a sitting duck. You're just golden. People are waiting and crowding around you. You burn Niles' flash, but now they're going for the base, and I think they can go for a Baron after this. And with the mountain and no flash onto the Skarner, the chance of a steal is little to none. Yep, crack the middle, sweep the vision out that you pretty much had all completed anyway, and then take the Baron at your leisure. 
Azure. Wolfie is going to go back, but he'll TP back into the Baron if he needs it. Same deal with Niles, who probably had a pretty significant amount of gold to go and spend. Finish Guardian Angel. In fact, for the Aatrox, this Baron is going to melt. Very fed. What is Skarner thinking about doing? Pops the Predator, but he can't get in. The Baron's already gone. Way too much damage, and almost back up is the Death Charge of Nautilus instead. They're just going to back off. It's a safer play. You have the Baron. I think that they're happy with the position that the game is in. Yep, not a lot left for them to do here. They can see another final. The former Collegiate Champions are looking for that chance once again. So a big deal in this fight is that Aatrox was collapsing on this sooner. Vladimir is not there, Nico is not there, and Tristana was in a short enough range to get tagged by the Nautilus ultimate. That means that every member of Maryville knows that the fight is about to happen. They can position themselves easily. And with Tristana in a stopwatch or eliminated, they just don't have enough damage to burn through the members of Maryville. Too much tankiness, too much sustain, and now there's three QSSs. Yeah, even if the Bosch had gotten out of that somehow. He was not auto-attacking yeah. for so long that you're never winning that team fight. Skarner is not doing any damage. Nico's not doing much damage. It's really only Vladimir. He's gone with a build that doesn't do a lot of DPS. There's QSSs though. What's he doing? And again, he's going to try and find the pick. He needs it for the curse of the sad mummy. Back up, CKG. Finds a three man. It's going to be an absolute whitewash here in the team fight. Top of Potomus able to find one pick, and Timmy Tommy gets his way out of there. But Niall smells blood. Wants to try and take down Toppy. But he is okay for now. Wolfie, though, continuing to chase his lane opponent. Looks for the E, finds a stun, healing back there from the Vlad, back into the pool with the Tides of Blood, but slept down by the Kingslayer. They're looking for the end. Look at Niles and Saskio. They're going all the way, and it's only Nico to defend. Wolfie going to chase. So Braum cannot recall. It is just the top laner here for University of Illinois, Maryville. The game is a little bit quieter, but they found the fights they needed. Silas will get another kill. Go unstoppable as Maryville will find themselves once again at the precipice of winning another college championship. Niles resurrect, but in death, the Nexus will fall. And they finally get their revenge, taking out University of Illinois. They will not lose two years in a row. And now we have Maryville University in the grand finals. They will play the winner of our upcoming best of five, but stellar performance. I mean, credit to Illinois. The game they took was spectacular to watch, but it felt like for almost all of this series, the game was firmly within Maryville's hands. Yeah. The Amumu got to the level six faster than the Skarner, was able to do a lot of work. The lanes were going very well, but they were just much more assertive when it came to objectives, understanding the value of the dragons, the value of pushing those objectives and getting down the vision. The vision made such a big difference for Maryville in this series. And it's hard to stress that enough because it's a team effort. It's not an individual member that finds it. It's a coordinated assault on the map. It's a team that just doesn't seem to really panic. You know, very assertive, very decisive, but they played a very steady pace, you know? I think you come off MSI, you see teams like IG and G2 just going crazy. Even Western Ontario was playing fast <laughs> and loose IG, in their 2 quarter quarterfinal. Western Ontario. Yeah. That's right. All very similar. <laughs> I just think the speed at which they play is, 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 again, credit to the program that Maryville has built. We heard Niles talking about how, you know, his teammates saying how talented he was, but how he himself said that I wanted to go to this school because of the program. Well, Program's paying off because the discipline and the, just the general cohesion this team has is, is really great to watch. And I'm not going to lie, being on the team is actually a really good way to learn life skills of how to work with other people. You have to make sacrifices for the greater good of what you're trying to accomplish. And so being part of programs like that do give you the skills to transition into whatever you want to do afterwards because you're going to have to work with people no matter what you do in any walk of life. And for some of these players, maybe it is those aspirations to go pro. We'll have to see. But so far, so good in the college championship as Maryville do move on. Yeah, and on the other side of University of Illinois, loved what they did on game three. Unfortunately, it didn't work out in game four, but they adapted with the draft. They understood what they needed to do, and we saw really big progression between game one, game two, game three, and even game four. So the fact that they learned, adapted, and improved is a great sign. I think it's the tough tough to play against one through one especially yeah. given how cleanly Maryville were able to play out those games. So again, you might say, hey, like, find a fight. But again, as you mentioned, without vision, without pressure, without side lane, it can be very difficult to do yeah. something. Even though you're telling yourself to do something, 
you kind of run out of options. There's sometimes. a lot of steps. You can't just say find the fight now. You have to always go through the you, checklist. You don't play with me. How do we do? <laughs> There's a reason why. Yeah. Very. Man, there's a lo laundry list of reasons. <laughs> well, the game system won't even allow us to. That's true. We literally cannot play yeah. together, right? It's keeping us apart. Only on the cop That's the greatest excuse to avoid together. any sort of awkwardness with my friend. <laughs> All right. Well, for more on their victory, Ovali is standing by with a couple of finalists for an interview. Thanks, Pastry. I am here with Saskeo and Clyde. Guys, congratulations on the win. You guys are moving on to finals. And with this win, you are taking revenge against Illinois for the loss last year. So Saskeo, was this a series that you were looking forward to? Yeah, so last year we had a huge upset. And through bot lane, it didn't work out. So I just decided to switch to bot lane and just do the, to do the job myself. Well, tell me a little bit about your bot lane transition, because it was when Niles came in and took the top lane, you started the transition to bot. Yeah, so while I was playing top lane, I was actually playing a lot of marksmen, and I do it a lot with Bloodwater. And when we needed an A carry, it was easy for me to just swap in. Well, I like that. Clyde, let's talk a little bit about the draft for this game and this series, because we heard from Coach Ido saying that eh, the Amumu pick for you guys was suboptimal going into that last game, but it really worked out. So what were your thoughts? Um, we found a lot of success with Amumu recently, um, within the last, last month or so in scrims. So just into Melee Champions, it's pretty good. And we saw a lot of focus kind of going against you and taking away your Thresh, forcing you onto the Rakan and then the Nautilus. So did you feel a little focused in that series? Um, I thought they were going to ban it from the beginning, honestly. Uh, from yesterday's series, like everyone like in this tournament should know that I'm a Thresh main. Um, and I'm surprised I got it the first two games, but I have a very big champion pool, so it works out. Was the team worried at all during the series when you dropped that game in game three? Uh, no, going in, we knew we were going to uh, just destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the confidence. You need that confidence as you're moving into the finals. The next game that we have is UC Irvine versus Western Ontario. I want to ask you guys a little bit about your thoughts on UC Irvine's bot lane because it's uh, Young Bin and Bloodwater, the most experienced bot lane at the tournament here. So what do you think of that duo? Yeah, so I have a lot of respect for both of them. Uh, I think as long as we stick to our game plan and follow what Zoo has told us, we should be fine. Clyde? Um, I think we should be fine. Uh... I'm pretty confident going into their bot lane. I've worked with Young Bin in the past, like four years ago. Uh, so I hope they ban Thresh. Now, is this the bot lane that you think you're going to be playing in the finals? Yes. Sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, thank you and congratulations again on the win. And best of luck to you guys moving into the finals. That is thank it you. for us here. Let's hear from Latigris at the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you so much, Avli. Welcome back to the Analyst Desk. We have Platoon this time around from Waterloo. And I got to say, it was the rematch that Illinois wanted, but not the result. No, unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, they put a really good fight up in game four. Honestly, I think a lot of the problems stem from the draft this game. Um, yeah, I mean, we were talking about it all throughout the the. Uh, series is like how important it is to get Zeno on an aggressive early champion, especially someone that Project One can can kind of get going. And the fact that they took the Vladimir last pick is not very proactive in lane, especially in the mid lane. He has some better matchups in the top side, but here and especially against the Silas, it's just really hard to get going. And so you have a very similar game to game one where it's slow. You have Maryville just building CS leads. I mean, the fact that the Mumu this thing, he's been out of the meta for a reason, <laughs> right. for like five years, and he comes back and gets a CS lead versus uh, Skarner. Skarner. Yeah. yeah, that's not supposed to happen. I could almost hear Amumu saying, oh, I thought you'd never pick me. And it's like, we didn't either. We yeah. didn't think no, that yeah, would you happen. wish they shouldn't have, maybe, <laughs> but it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Can't it, criticize it. It did work. It was a slower game, but there were still the moments that brought it in the favor of MU. If you take a look at what was happening in the mid lane in particular, we've had our eyes on this lane matchup through the entire series. Mm -hmm, exactly, right here. Skarner gets caught before the fight even starts, and honestly, I feel like uh, Illinois should have been a little more patient because they, they're they eager to take this fight 3v5 after Skarner just died for free, and then it really doesn't turn out very well. Yeah, this whole bot side jungle was something that's been getting warded time and time again by Maryville. They kind of picked their a moment to go against Nico. She's respawning, kind of just runs back into mm -hmm. this lane as well. So. It was a, a bit of a slow, slow game, like we said, and then finally they start finding these pickoffs because they have such control over the game. Mm -hmm. uh, good warding all around for Maryville, and overall a very nice change to see compared to yesterday when, or maybe two days ago, when Maryville was going wild and like flashing level one in the top lane. 
But as far as the overall series went, Maryville in that interview, still holding that same confidence that they did before, saying, oh, we thought it was going to be a 3-0, easy. Yeah. But it wasn't a 3-0. It was a 3-1. <laughs> so what was it that Illinois ended up doing positively, particularly in the game before, to kind of keep themselves in it and prove that they are true contenders? Yeah, I definitely think that um, uh, Mark Z mentioned the Vlad pick there. In, game, in the game that they won, they picked the Yasuo, which actually has pressure in the lane. They can team fight and it can split push. So Zeno was really 1v9 that game. But in this game, Vlad was getting pushed in the entire game. And honestly, it felt like the game was kind of over before he could even play the game. Yeah. That's a really tough spot to be in when you feel that it's out of your control before you can really make that impact. So as far as the way that Maryville were doing it, it wasn't a matter of getting all these early picks. It was pretty slow, only a single kill for a good portion of the game, 14 minutes or something like that. Yeah, and I think uh, it was one of the things that people were expecting to see for Wolf. I think he was really impressive for me being able to hold on, as well as the bot lane. Uh, they did get targeted a lot. You heard them talking like, ah, oh, yeah, they, they banned my Thresh finally. The Rakan game was not very impressive, uh, but he said he was very confident they go to the Nautilus pick. And so this felt like a whole team victory, I guess, where everyone was stepping up to control the game. And it did feel like also Maryville prioritized the engaged potential, not just in that last game, but games prior. So what are your thoughts on the way that they handle these different fights throughout? Uh, so it, honestly, for Maryville, they control the map really well, comparatively like to yesterday against NCSU. Uh, they were playing very methodically. So it, honestly, there wasn't any chance for University of Illinois to do anything. And Maryville were just waiting there every single time, ready to take free fights and end the game. Yeah, you get to see how well balanced their team comp was. Everyone hit kind of around that 15, 10 to 15K damage from all their carry positions. And even the Amumu getting in there a little bit, <laughs> uh, he does a lot of damage when he goes unchecked and is able to farm up. So overall, I think they showed uh, some pretty good poise in this series, but uh, I do think that they have some things to improve on, assuming they do play UCI. They themselves were kind of hyping up that potential matchup. And with that particular matchup in the mid lane, you had Zeno, but you had Wolfie, who, let's say it, he was showing out there in the end and ended up coming through in the clutch for his team. Yep, gonna pick up player of the series overall. I, I was really impressed by him because we were hyping up Zeno this whole time as the guy who was supposed to kind of carry Illinois. And the fact that in that second game, taking the Velkaz last pick to counter out the rise, start stomping him, get some solo kills, wins 2v2s, and then even in the games where he didn't get counterpicked, playing Silas and Rise blind and maybe falling a little bit behind in CS, but always having pressure in his lane. Yeah, he definitely put up a solid performance all, every single game. Um, even the one he was kind of, you know, he had some trouble with the Yasuo. I think that was just honestly, again, a draft problem. Mm -hmm. um, the Silas is really strong for him. He was getting prio against Zeno, their star player, and through that, they were able to take so much off of that. And remember, everybody watching, that means Maryville are the first to secure their spot in the finals of the Collegiate Championship. That's a big deal. All of you have been playing throughout the entirety of the season to get to that point. So what are some of the strengths that you saw that you want to see carried over into the final match, whoever their opponent may be? Definitely with Maryville, they, you know, this game, it was a little, uh, a little boring to watch, but very well played by Maryville. They used all the priority. They took a free dragon at 0-0 very early in the game, just off of lane priority. Basically everything in the game was off of lane priority and there were no fights that were sort of close uh, with the exception of Nautilus getting caught a, f a couple times. But yeah, hopefully more of that methodical play. I think that they need to find their sweet spot. Maybe their first series was too aggressive. And I would say going up against UCI who have deemed themselves kings of the late game, I think this might be too slow against them. So you need to find a little bit more aggression than this series, but not all out like the last one. Well, 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 though, that's the thing. They might not be facing not. off against UCI. <laughs> you're, you're calling it before it potentially happens there, Mark. But we will have that match coming up for you soon. Thank you so much, Platoon, for joining us here Thank on you. the State Farm Analyst Desk. It was such a pleasure. And coming up next, we do have our next semifinal, Western versus UCI. So don't go anywhere. Welcome to Illinois versus Maryville. Top opponents does have his flat. Gonna get rooted in place now. Flash out of the way, but the E already there for the stun. That's gonna be a kill. Niles collects it. We have no vision now. On my hook. Oh, I missed, I missed. Okay, it's okay. Nice. Good shit. Oh, go mid, go mid. Maryville with a statement to kick off their best of five. They'll take game one. Oh, oh boy. Ignite in onto Saskia. Project one with a slow nails it there. There's gank. Quite culty here. Uh, GP all Nautilus all. 
Does have the flash there as well. Gonna get snared up forever though. Flashes around the side. Might be okay. Gonna keep trying to dance out of there. But a great stop watch as Niles. Can't juke to Kuz and Zeno. Had enough. Flashes in. Uses the E. But he trades. Whoa. What the? Holy moly. We win. We win. Fine. We win. Fine. Is that deal? Still not. Chris is almost dead. Chris yeah, is hey, dead. Hey, hey, Chris, 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 Chris. Chris. Yeah. Come on, Rumble, Rumble. Rumble, Rumble. Let's go, baby. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Getting aggressive, though. Going to try and take the Drake. He's going to go over. CKG in the pit. Look for the steal. But he's going to get stunned. He's got no world ender. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Trucks, hey, Trucks, hey, hey, Trucks. I got him, I got him. I win what? I win yeah, yeah, yeah. what? I heal for Go, Siles, 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 Siles. Siles, 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 Siles. Siles, 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 Siles. Siles, 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 UI looking to reinforce top of bottom is going to finally make his way in with a pop blast. So gets two for the stab, but he gets hooked on the other side of it. Sasuke able to get the next kill. It's Wolfie that's going to follow up with the second. He's going to try and find the pick he needs it, but the curse of the sad mummy back up. CKT finds a three man. It's going to be an absolute white one. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And they finally get their revenge, taking out University of Illinois.